Hello my soccer universe. Well, Italy can even win with a B squad. Um, however, I have to say when I saw the lineup and they call it B squad, it still looked like a pretty good lineup. Uh, the depth in this Italy team I find rather remarkable, I have to say. And I'm more and more not only putting them towards uh, being a tournament favorite now, or the tournament favorite now, although uh, they haven't been tested uh, by a really, really big side, but you know, overall squad depth, style of play, uh, the atmosphere within the team, probably now an easy game in the next round, and then being ready for three tough games. It just as well work. Um, I, for me, we have to really ask questions. Are Italy tournament favorites at this moment? I'm very Italy. I'm about to wear Switzerland, who gave themselves a good chance of advancing, as we will see. But then, uh, due to the um, win, Switzerland moved up on the wall here. So there you go. And I don't have another Switzerland jersey yet. Uh, I was actually about close to buying one ahead of the tournament but you know given how they have been playing i'm a little bit yeah yeah not sure <laughs> I, we have to see actually i have i i have to see now uh who they will play again against and so on and maybe if there is an easy opponent although i doubt it as a third place team then maybe maybe there's a need for a second switzerland jersey um wales also move uh move further um they were never really in danger yesterday of uh, dropping into third place. However, it was potentially in there. Um, and then Turkey, biggest disappointment of the tournament. Uh, definitely, definitely. With two half home games and a squad that everyone, uh, that everyone would say is a very talented one, not advancing, is a shame. Well. I would say let's uh, jump briefly into, I mean, I saw Italy against Wales, uh, like most people outside of Switzerland and Turkey probably have. But uh, I have to be, be, be mention this before, but for me this is uh, the biggest surprise that we saw Italy against Wales. Blue versus red and Italy in the first kit. Uh, wasn't it beautiful to watch? Why didn't we get this in the opening game? It worked just fine, I have to say. And as I said, the Italian lineup, even with eight changes, did not look all that bad. I mean, even Bernadeschi uh, in the Italy team looks much better than he does for Juventus. Uh, and it was a, Torino, a, a Turin uh, front three because Belotti also started up top. So, uh, and Verratti back, uh, he might be one that could start again, although the way that the others have been playing, I am not so sure. And even with that, yes, Italy look a little bit more rusty than they did before, but still they, they were largely in control of, of the game, uh, created chances. I think uh, especially Chiesa was in there, Belotti had a few shots. Uh, yes, Wales also had one uh, good header, I think, uh, but you know, it was largely Italy. Uh, without being as flamboyant as they have been before, but it was still a very useful performance. Um, and they get the goal from a free kick um, through Verratti uh, outside and, and uh, you know, out, uh, on the right outside, a really short, short, short take and Pessina just gets a touch on it, puts it in, into the net. Um, as you may know, I actually was kind of hoping that Italy will lose Kind, I mean, I'm happy when Italy wins. Don't get, 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 get wrong, and I'm trying to convince myself that the win was good. But a loss would have seen Italy finish in second place, which might have been a sweeter route. Um, second half, there was a crazy period where uh, I think first we got um, uh, a shot on the post for Italy. Then um, we had uh, suddenly Ramsey showing up in front of Donnarumma all by himself, but not getting off a shot. Uh, and then it was uh, crowned by a way for, for, with a red card on Empadu, which honestly, I mean, I can see how people might say it's not a red card because, you know, it's on the line between red and yellow. 
I was considering uh, that it was going against the pace and he was stepping on the player really high. I think there's no way that VAR will overturn this. So for me, it was uh, it was maybe a little bit hard, hard record, but to me, it was a red card. Uh, and yeah, he didn't mean it. But still, it was an unnecessary challenge to step into that. Uh, that. And I think then there was uh, a chance by Belotti and one where Gareth Bale just was free on the side. And I think uh, he volleys it on his left foot and over the bar. And I think this is now the second time that Bale puts it all over the bar in a situation where you would expect him to score. Still, Italy get the win, and with that, Wales now had a goal difference of plus one, meaning Italy, ah, uh, Switzerland needed a big, big win to overtake Wales based on goal de 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 difference, which they did not get. Although, as I said, Italy probably could, could, could have won by two um, easily, and then it, uh, Swiss, Swiss, Switzerland would have only needed to win by three. So to get this five goal uh, uh, swing in, Switzerland Turkey was a rather open game, uh, many open spaces. It was probably not pretty to, to watch, but there were many chances on both sides, but not uh, high class ch uh, chances. Um, Switzerland very early on got on the right path there. And as I said, I'm thoroughly disappointed by Tur Turkey. Uh, Zuba assists Seferovic, who puts it out from a from, from, from box. And then when Shakiri with a great shot from outside, makes it 2-0. Two, two it was pretty much a done deal that Switzerland will go through. Uh, the goal by Kaveci was a really, really ni a nice one to make it 2-1. But then just a few minutes later, Sha Shakiri scores a second goal and that was the game uh, for Swi Switzerland, who also hit the post, I think, through Shaka. And then uh, all Turkish players kept up picking up yellow cards, and especially John Logan Soyunci. If they would have had have Mouton, would have been out, but you know, didn't really matter this, uh, this time around. Um, and so uh, Group A finishes with an Italy 1 0 win, Switzerland 3 1 win. Which means that Italy ahead of Wales, ahead of Switzerland and Turkey. Now Switzerland is in third place, but with four points and a minus one, they have given themselves a decent chance. I mean, I, my model has them at 96%, still advancing as one of the best placed, uh, best uh, third place teams. Uh, we have to see how things develop. It might as well be that uh, the way Group B finishes, you get one behind, um, and then uh, there is the potential for Group. D and uh, E and so on, that there is, or even F, that you move on, uh, that, that, that you move on in that place. Um, we also have confirmed now three slots for the round of 16. We have Wales playing in Amsterdam on the, on next Saturday, uh, Italy in the evening in London, and uh, then next day uh, the Netherlands in Budapest will be playing. Uh, the ranking of the third place teams at the moment sees Switzerland up top. Uh, you, you can see that Portugal maybe will need a point. Austria also. Uh, Finland, or, yeah, no, everyone. Uh, all Portugal, Austria, Finland. Uh, with Finland, you're not so sure because as uh, they will play Belgium. I think Spain might not finish in third, third place in Croatia. Uh, yeah will also need a win, which put them ahead of uh, Switzerland for sure. As for projections, uh, we don't need to project Group A anymore because everything's finished. But however, we see that uh, it, it, it is a pretty clear route to the quarterfinals, and then it could get iffy uh, there. But uh, it's only chances have, so it's a kind of a 50 50 shot making into the semi finals uh, once you reach the quarterfinal. Um, but you know, this all depends because there's still a lot of fluctuation going on, and maybe Germany wins the group and then uh, things get, e get easy, easy. And I think it's not unlikely that Germany will win the group at this moment. Uh, as for projected third, third place teams, uh, Switzerland at this moment would be in the third spot, uh, Portugal ahead of Switzerland. Um, based on the goal div difference, you can see that happening. And now with that, we have the bracket again. Uh, only minor changes in the third place spot. You see suddenly Belgium plays against Slovakia, they've been playing against Germany, uh, Italy, uh, Ukraine. 
uh, was anyway there, but now Switzerland would play against France. Not an opponent that France would like, and probably not an exciting matchup. Um, Austria still stays with Sweden, England, Germany we have, and Wales is now projected to play against Russia at this moment. And we have Netherlands, Portugal, uh, which is also kind of uh, interesting because this I had all, you know, in my first project, I had Paul Portugal finishing third. Um, and then playing the Netherlands, where you would uh, favor them, and it would see them at the moment all the way through to the semifinals, where they would play against England, who would do the home field to the Rangers, still would carry on to win the title. And Belgium at the moment, slightly ahead of France. Just have that in mind as well. As for overall uh, favorites, Belgium is uh, now taking a slight lead over France. Again, they are flip-flopping, so take your pick. Uh, they are Italy in fourth place uh, together with England. England home field advantage carries them forward. Um, but you know, Italy is there at this moment. And if they keep on winning, they will uh, become more favorites. The Netherlands are in fifth, which uh, is given their draw not that unreasonable. However, as I say, third place could also you could play against Portugal. So uh, if they don't play against Portugal, then. It could work out very sweet for the Dutch there. Switzerland uh, moves now uh, far ahead because they are almost in the next round. Definitely, uh, although Sweden, Wales and the Czechs, but they are, they are high, more highly rated, at least in uh, all the three rate ratings that I'm using. As for today, we have four games and I would say the early slots is pretty easy that you should watch Ukraine against Austria because that's the only game to be, to play for because North Macedonia against the Netherlands um, is a dead rubber. I mean, one is last and one is first. Uh, which might ac ac actually be fun because I don't think Ukraine-Austria will be fun because both are looking very good with a draw. And if you look now, you know, the... Second place team will play against Italy. The third place team has a chance potentially to play Sweden. They have not much incentive to do much. So I actually, I actually expect a rather dull draw. If Austria would go behind, they're losing and they're going out of the tournament. That's also what I'm saying. Um, then Finland against Belgium. Um, Finland need a point. And then they will most likely finish in uh, second place because I think Russia will lose to Denmark. Uh, Denmark would hope for a Belgium win and they, them winning against Russia and then also the goal difference uh, in the game against Belgium might actually move them up into second place. A two goal win definitely will do that. Um, a one goal win then it depends uh, how much Belgium will beat Finland, if at all. But yeah, I think the evening uh, games are probably way more interesting than the Group C games to uh, start the day. In any case, let me know how, what you think about uh, Italy and uh, their performances. Do you think they are their favorites? What do you think uh, about uh, the other uh, teams in group, group C and especially how will groups uh, B and C uh, turn out today? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my software universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.